Hello, hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? How are you doing? Fine. Are you doing fine? Are you okay? So, uh, good evening, Dinora, Mauricio. Good evening. Great to good see evening. you. Hi, Gina. Hello. Hello, guys. Hey, ladies. Thank you for joining. Good evening. Kenya, hello. Hi, Damaris. Abigail, Hector. Good evening, guys. How Hi, are teacher. You? How are you doing? Everything good? Are you doing all right? Are you doing fine? I am driving for my house, teacher. Ah, okay. Okay, no worries, Miss. I hope you get home uh, sound and safe. Thank you so much for joining. What about the I rest, guys? How are you doing? Hector? I have my dinner, teacher. Oh, okay, no worries. Enjoy it. So I hope your dinner goes well. How are you guys? What about the rest? Everything good? Are you doing okay? Are you all right? So, so, a little bit. Georgina, are you all right? Lady, are you cool? How was your weekend? How was your Saturday, your Sunday? Was it okay? So, so, sort of. How is it, guys? Well, we are having today session number 15, and I'm really glad to see you. Um, guys, officially, nos quedan solamente cinco sesiones, so we are missing only five sessions uh, to finish the module, which I think it's a really good thing, right? Um, wait up, wait up. Okay, so um, pretty much those are the only ones, uh, and uh, then we are just going to be like waiting there until next year it comes. Give me one sec. Sorry, I'm trying just to adjust my line here. Okay. It's not working. Never mind. Okay. So in the meantime, guys, uh, we are going to uh, have a couple of things for today. Vamos a, a trabajar un poquito con las phrasal verbs que nos quedaron pendientes from the previous class, right? And I'm sure that uh, I think that we were kind of struggling a little with a little bit with this phrasal verb. So we're gonna work a little with those. Um eh, también guys, no sé si pudieron practicar un poquito los verbos en participio. Did you practice verbs in past participle a little bit? Did you have a chance? Hi Juanjo, good evening. Uh, Mr. Narvaez. Hi, good, good evening. evening. Good to see you. How you doing? Abigail, hello. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on or what celebration is going on here, but anyways. Okay, so guys, pudieron practicar un poquito eh, los participios. Did you get to practice those? Revisar un poquito las idioms, a little? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. So we're going to check those uh, like super quick. Right, so the idea is to um, get this verb the fastest and the most, um, the 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 most uh, more comfortable you are with those, the easier it'll get. Right, so give me a sec. Let me check on something. Okay. Okay, guys. So to get started, let me just present this over to you and help me super quick, guys, with the verbs we have right here. So um, over there, for example, we get get. Can you help me with both, like super quick? Like, what's the past and past participle of get, guys? Got. Got. Okay, so that 
God, God, in God or God in God? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about come? Come, came, came. come. Came, there we go. Come. Very nice. What about make? Make. And? Make, made. Made and made, exactly the same. And uh, what about read? Read, read, read. 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 Ok, solo que la pronunciación va a cambiar a un color. Okay. Exactly, red and red, very nice. There we go. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Serrano, good evening. Great to see you. We have, oh, we have a speak. So what about, what about a speak? Speak, spoke, spoken. Speak, spoke, spoken. Ok, height. Fold, fold. Fold and fold, very good. May, we already got it. What about fine? Make found and made. found. Mm -hmm. So find, found, and, uh, and found. Yes. Oh, yes. For make, that is the one. What about give, guys? What do you have in give? Give. Cup. Cup. Mm, okay. Yeah. So give, gave, and given. All right. Give, gave, and given. Cook. Solo le agregamos un sonido nada más. If you remember, es un verbo regular. It's a regular verb. Oh. Solo le agregamos solo un sonidito. Cook. 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 And cook. Ok, cook. solo es el. Ok, there we go. What about say? Say. 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 Very nice. Eh, take. Oh, what about take? Do we have it before? No. Ok, take. Talk. Talk. Okay, so take, took, and took, take, taken, perfect, take, to taken, uh-huh, nice, like how you taken, right, what about eat, 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 and eaten, all right, very good, and the next one we have is forget, what about forget, forgot, forgot, forgiven, Cambio un poquito. Forget, forgot, forgotten. Forgotten. Porque forgiven es el pasado participio de forgive, yeah. de perdonar. Exactly. So forgive, perdonar. Forget, olvidar. Right? Forget, forgot, forgotten. And forgive, de perdonar. Forgive, forgave, forgiven. Um, so si se les eh, complica esta acá, solamente recuérdense con get. Get, got, got it. Oh, forget, forget, forget it. Es el mismo. And give, 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 give it. Forgive, forgive, forgiven. Right? What about work? Work, work it. Work, work, work it. Solo es un sonido que le vamos a agregar. Only one sound. Work, 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 work. Work, work, work. Word. There we go. So, word, word. Perfect. Very nice. Okay. Amazing. There we go. Yes, guys, creo que los han estado revisando y si no, guys, todavía tienen tiempo para que los revisen. Because no solo es para el módulo, right? In, uh, actually, es para que nos podamos comunicar un poco más eficientemente. So, um, let's just move on a little bit. En el día de ahora vamos a revisar un poquito de idioms. En las clases anteriores yo sé que ha sido bastante vocabulario. I know you have had phrasal verbs, idioms. Um, y en realidad sí es bastante que memorizar, but you know, tómense el tiempo, cinco minutitos todos los días, five minutes, guys, every single day, uh, pueden hacer la diferencia. So I truly recommend you eh, a conciencia que se tomen un par de minutitos antes de la clase eh, para que los revisen, right? Because siempre vamos a ir agregándole más y más y más vocabulario y la idea es que no solo quede ahí, right? Sino que ustedes también lo aprovechen al máximo. Um, el día de ahora vamos a revisar un par de phrases, de idioms, sorry. Um, decíamos la vez anterior que idioms son expresiones eh, verbales que utilizamos en que son propias de un idioma. So, uh, tenemos acá un par de idioms que ustedes las, las van a utilizar um, de forma bastante usual, de hecho. No son cosas raras, no es que no se utilicen, de hecho sí se usan mucho. <risa> Mm. En, si les gusta la música, guys, en songs lo van a utilizar mucho. En uh, again, no es la idea que lo pongan en el traductor, sino de estas no se pueden poner en translator. 
porque les van a decir otra cosa que nada que ver con el significado. Si han escuchado a Adele, por ejemplo, hay una canción que dice um, Someone like you y menciona settle down. So ahora vamos a ver, es parte de esas expresiones que son con settle down, and wipe out, stressed out. Hay una canción de 21, dra no, 21 Pilot que se llama stressed out. So, I mean, they are in the language that we normally speak or people normally speak. So let's take a look super quick. Aquí tenemos read the uh, definitions of the useful idioms. También tenemos un par de drawings, right? Tenemos un par de pictures para que podamos hacer como la, um, la, um, el link, right? De cuál es la asociación entre la picture y qué significa. For example, if you take a look here, tenemos como un, parece cerebro, it looks like a brain. Y dice, slip my mind. Tenemos como una banana, right? Because slip is like this lizard. So, slip my mind. ¿Qué creen que significa, guys? What do you think this means? So, está el cerebrito, está el banana peel, y es como que el cerebro se desliza. Any idea? What do you think? Wait, so let's, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the following. Hold on. I don't want you to read it. <laughs> okay, so what do you think they mean? The first one, el primer dibujito que tienen acá arriba, uh, es uh, con el cerebro. Okay, give, give me some ideas, guys. No importa si están correctas, incorrectas, it doesn't matter. Give us ideas. Uh, teacher, como div divagando. Okay. Divagando, okay, okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. Guys, ¿qué más se les ocurre? El cerebrito se deslizó en la banana peel. So, no no le mencioné, alucinando, teacher. Alucinando, cuando nos equivocamos, eh, divagando, ok. De hecho, está súper cerca. You're very close. Y sí, está relacionado. Everything is related. Anybody else? ¿Cómo que se le olvidó? Yeah, exactly. So, slip my mind means, pues sí, estoy divagando, you know, I'm like totally lost, pero algo se me olvidó. So, we use slip my mind for that. Ya vamos a revisar el significado, but that is the idea. The next one, uh, or the next idiom, se llama, uh, or utilizamos la expresión que dice, I have too much food on my plate. Like, I have too much food. I have too much, boy, too much food, literal, on my plate. What do you think it means? Sí, puede ser que realmente tengo mucha comida, right? But <laughs> anything else, I have too much food on my plate. What do you think it means? Como demasiado que hacer. Ah, okay, okay, nice. Demasiado que hacer, okay. Y cuando estamos hablando de trabajo, when we're talking about work, what do you think it means? Mucho trabajo. Demasiado trabajo, right? Más de lo que puedo manejar. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, sleep my mind, como que algo se me olvidó, como que ando divagando, bien perdido. I have too much food on my plate. Literal. Tengo mucho, right? Mm -hmm. The next one, no sé si lo logra leer. I don't know if you can read it. Está en la parte de acá, de abajito. It says, keep your head above water. Probably you don't see it. Let me write it here. So keep, oopsie, keep my head or keep your head. Keep, keep your head above water. And we have this one. So what do you think it means? Como el agua hasta el cuello. Con el agua hasta el cuello. Oh, ok. Ok, but eso es bien interesante porque la, la cabeza no está tocando el agua. Yes. Ajá. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. So, what do you think? So again, literalmente es esto, es el dibujito, right? Keep your head above. Mantenga la cabeza sobre, ya, yeah, sin tocar el agua. But what do you think? ¿Qué se les ocurre, guys? What do you think over here? What ideas come to your mind? Hmm. 
Recuerda. Así como so sobreviviendo. Así. Ok, sobreviviendo. Ok. Se me hace que ya las vio, Julio. <ríe> ok, no, but it's all right. It's really good. Sobreviviendo. Ok. De hecho, sí. Keep your head above water. Es como hacer todo lo posible por mantenerse a flote. En español usamos la expresión mantenerse a flote, right? Uh, so that would be keep your head above water. That's the one we use in English. Si alguna vez se preguntaron, you know, en español, again, tenemos muchas expresiones en El Salvador. So esta es una de ellas. Mantenerse a flote es como keep your head above water. That'll be the one. Uh, what about the next one? Eh, esta expresión se la voy a mostrar en un momento porque... Eh, la, el idiom significa varias cosas. So, puede significar esto, right? Como formar una familia, like somebody's pushing you, hey, do it, right? Pero también eh, el idiom tiene un significado diferente, así que es mejor que lo veamos. It's better. Eh, so, it is better to. To look at them. So give me one second. Hold on. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I'm going to show them in a moment. So the next ones probably son totalmente uh, nuevas for you. So let's take a look at them. Um, and let's go here like little by little para que también las podamos utilizar, right? If you take a look, for example, the, the primera que is a definition of these useful idioms, la primera que tenemos acá is wiped out, que is very tired. If you look at the person, uh, if you take a look here, vemos a esta persona que está wiped out. No sé si han escuchado la expresión burn out. So burn sí. out es como cuando ya estamos al tope, ya nos quemamos, ya no Bien encontramos agotado. qué hacer. Bien agotado. So wiped out es lo mismo, very tired. Pero como estoy, like in Spanish, yo utilizo mucho estoy reventada, you know? Like estoy demasiado cansada, I'm too tired. You know? And um, I have no energy, I don't have any strength. So utilizamos wiped out. So wiped out, very tired, right? I'm extreme, I mean, born out uh, now. So that's the one. Uh, el siguiente que tenemos es to have a lot in one's plate. O de hecho, el dibujito que está acá arriba, right? Con el plato lleno. So I have a lot on my plate, right? So tengo demasiado en mi plato. I have a lot of work. I have a lot of activities. Tengo demasiado que hacer. I have too much to do. Simply, that's it. Teacher. Settle down. Yes, yes, miss. Tell me, tell me. Una consulta, teacher. Es Dígame. wipe, wipe out. Wipe, wiped out. White. White. Como los wipers. wipers. Pero podemos usar esa o very tired o es lo mismo. Es una sola oración. No, no, no. Eh, ah, lo que sucede es que acá ten, tienen como la definición, let's say. So, ah. wiped out es la, la idiom and very tired es el significado. Ah, ok. Um, mm -hmm. Same here. To have a lot in one's plate, el significado es to have a lot to do. Yes, yeah, so tenemos ambos, idioms and work. Creo que por los dos puntitos. Dos no maneras sé. de decir lo mismo, teacher. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Son okay. como sinónimos, digamos, right? Okay. Pero Thank como you, los teacher. idioms eh, son bien difíciles de buscarlos en el diccionario, en un traductor, entonces por eso es que tenemos que significan. Um, so let me just underline the meaning para que sea un poco más fácil for you to look at it. Uh, so the blue one is the meaning, right? Wait, 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 wait. It's to store this part. And this one is to be forgotten. Okay. There we go. So I have, for example, come down. This is el, el idiom que les comentaba. O el idiom en phrasal verb. De hecho, es ambos. To settle down. Se pronuncia settle, guys. Por si lo escuchan raro. Settle. Settle down. Como la canción. Váyanse a escuchar a Dale. And hay una parte donde dice, I know you settle down something. So settle down is to calm down. Pero en el sentido que como uno anda, um, you don't really know what to do with your life, let's say. 
y de repente viene la familia y le dice, ah, ya, ya formalizaste, you know? So in that sense, settle down is este dibujito uh, on the corner. So this one right here, right? And like another person is pushing, hey, get married, hey, make a family, hey, settle down. So settle down is like calm down, pero en el sentido de formalizarse, right? Um, so that is the one we got there. Next one is hanging there. Eh, de veíamos la vez anterior que podemos usar calm down para calmarte, right? Eh, be patient, yeah. Chill out, take it easy. So, todas significan calm, cálmese, relájese, tómelo, you know, despacio. Pero también podemos usar hanging there. Pero hanging there es más en el sentido de. Así, así es, pero espera. Pero es que no ñique así. Hanging there, hey, hanging there. Permanezca ahí, quédese ahí. Eh, be patient, right? Take uh, decisions, but easily or. Just be patient, pretty much. That is the idea of hanging there. Para eso creo que no tengo dibujito. Um, the next one we got, eh, era la que Julia nos decía sobrevivir. And that is totally right. Si ven el dibujito de acá, the woman, el, la cabeza la tiene totalmente sobre el agua sin tocarla. So it's like, keep your head above your shoulder or mantenerse a flote, right? Eh, that is the one we use in Spanish, but in English vamos a utilizar Keep my head above the water. Keep your head above the water. I'm keeping my head above the water. So estoy sobreviviendo. Me estoy manteniendo a flote. That is the meaning of that word. Mm. If it's possible, guys, memorizanselas porque se usan así como las ven, tal cual. Es sin cambiarle or modify words. Uh, the other one we have is to scale back one sour. No tengo dibujo for that one. But that is to reduce the number of hours a person works. Um, so to scale back once hour. To be honest, esta casi no la he visto y no la he escuchado tampoco in real English. But uh, it is important that you know it just in case. Luego tenemos stressed out. Eso se utiliza muchísimo. Eh, para decir estoy estresado. Guys, no digamos I am stressed. Digamos, I am stressed out. Agreguemos el out para que suene eh, menos latinoamericano. <risa> ok, para que suene un poquito menos Google Translate or right? Eh, porque la expresión de hecho es completamente así. I am stressed out. Are you stressed out? El out no significa nada, right? Pero le da un sentido uh, más, más americano. That is the point, you know? It sounds more American. So, under severe strain or very anxious. En realidad es estar estresado. Pero ya no vamos a decir, I am stressed. Sino, I am stressed out. Completa la expresión. Como decíamos con clean, ya no vamos a decir clean, vamos a decir clean up. Right? Uh, ya no voy a decir, for example, guys, ayúdenme con las phrasal verbs que vimos la semana anterior. Take up. Ok, so take. Había bastante. Wake up. Lot. Wake up, all right. But in this. This is a. Ah, very nice. You checked them. Ok, cool. En el caso de clean, por ejemplo, clean es limpiar. Clean up es limpiar. Pero clean up suena mejor que clean. Y lo mismo es el caso de stressed out. Stressed and stressed out son lo mismo. Pero stressed out suena mejor que stressed. Uh, so that is the point. Vamos a ir cambiando un par de expresiones, right? Y la última que hice es slip one mine. Es el dibujito exactamente que hice. Eh, slipped my mind. Lo usamos así como el dibujo. Oh my God, it slipped my mind. Se me olvidó, right? To be forgotten. So if you want to say, oh my God, se me olvidó eso. It slipped my mind. Y ya no decimos, I forgot it. So. ¿Cuál va a ser la diferencia, guys? De hecho, es lo mismo, decimos lo mismo. But remember, estamos intentando ir de inglés básico a inglés intermedio. Y luego de intermedio a avanzado. ¿Qué es lo que determina eh, el nivel de inglés en el que estoy? El uso de estas cositas. El uso de idioms, el uso de phrasal verbs, 
y que mi vocabulario sea mucho más variado, right? Um, so guys, repitan conmigo. Repeat with me, please, and then we practice them. So white, esta, eh, el último pedacito eh, es como wiped out, wiped out. White out. There, we, there we go. Okay. Next one. Vamos a, vamos a cambiarlo. Vamos a decir de una sola vez cómo lo utilizaríamos. Right? That is, I have a lot in my plate. So I have a lot on my plate. I have a lot on my plate. I have a lot in my plate. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot. There we go. To settle down. To settle down. To settle down. Okay. Hang in there. 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 Exactly. Unimos el sonido, right? Hanging, hanging, hanging there. Hanging there. Hanging mm -hmm. there. There we go. Uh, I keep my head above water. I keep my head above water. I keep my hair. Keep my hair above water. Above water. Above, above water. Mm -hmm. Okay. To scale one, to scale back one hour. To scale back one hour. One hour. Mm -hmm. one hour. That's, that's it. Stressed out. Stressed out. Stressed out. Exactly. Stressed. Stressed. Le agregamos el sonido de la T. Stressed out. Mm -hmm. I am super stressed out. So we don't say stressed out, but stressed out, right? Lo cambiamos por una T. So I am super stressed out. And then last one, uh, normalmente esta lo utilizamos con it, right? Como, oh, se me olvidó. All right. It has slipped my mind. It has slipped my mind. It has slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. So se me olvidó, right? Oh my God, it has slipped my mind. No digo I, sino it. Eso se me olvidó. That's the normal way to use it. Hi, Kevin, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Uh, I have a question. Sure, tell me. Anytime when in any word finishing in D, we change uh, uh, D Pronunciation? or T. Mm, no, not necessarily. Um, cause, um, we were checked, um, let me see, one, two, Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday last week, we checked a little bit of pronunciation of, uh, the verbs that normally change, uh, with a T or with the D or the ones that we can add ed, right? The normal ed, like visited, deleted, invited. So some <laughs> verbs, you can do it, but some verbs, they don't allow it. But but no worries. Actually, since we are finishing the unit today, vamos a revisarla one more time. But there are some rules. There are some rules for that. But in the case of stress, so it goes with a slight, a slight T. So uh, I am stressed, stressed out. That is why it's when I come out, stressed out. Uh, same with white. So white out, right? Uh, it goes with a T. So those verbs go with a T. Uh, but we're going to check that later, Kevin. No worries. We're going to double check it one more time today. So, uh, okay, by the way, by the way, when uh, I understand that mm -hmm. uh, when the next word is out, mm -hmm. we we change the D for T. Mm, no, that is not accurate. Not no, okay. it depends on the verb. Um, and, and that's why. Uh, ya vamos a revisarlo. We're going to check it okay. one more time. Porque si hay reglas, eh, pero lo que estamos haciendo, en este caso, el sonido, la razón por la que suena, que se están uniendo, is because, remember guys, eh, vamos a, a trabajar un poquito, hanging, lo decimos también acá, lo decimos también acá, que eh, lo que estamos haciendo, guys, es un poquito de fluidez con eso, right? 
en vez de ir en I, oh, I am feeling so white out, estoy cortando el sonido, estoy terminando la fluidez que yo llevo, so uno todos esos sonidos. That's why lo mismo hacemos con hang, so hang in there, right? So hanging, no lo voy a separar, hang in there, mm -mm. hanging, yeah. hanging there. Okay. So wiped out, okay. hanging there, and hanging there. Out. Hanging there, exactly. Lo que hacemos es unimos los soniditos. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me, guys. Yes. yes? Um, in this sentence, no es necesario the pronouns. Add pronouns. For example, Pronoun. I, I. Yes, I, yes, of course. Down. Yes, of course. What happens here is that eh, ellas están en su forma base, por eso es que ahorita lo ve como uh, to, to settle them, es el verbo, right? Para decirnos si es un verbo or if it is an expression, pero acá no están todavía conjugadas. That's why nosotros ya les vamos agregando y por eso es que acá les comento, con la última es leave one mind, a ese le vamos a agregar it. Este es el pronombre más común que va con it. Uh, con uh, el idioma, right? So, yeah, ya lo vamos a trabajar. We're going to work on that. Thank you. So, uh, let me see, let me see. What else? Siento que I'm missing something. Guys, any other question? Let me know, please. No questions? Okay, okay. Well, ya vamos a trabajar, los guys, and probably uh, you get to have some questions in the process, right? So, um, estos están en su libro, así que let's go straight to your book. Let's go straight to your material. But once again, let's take a look. Alguien super cansado, le decimos. Oh, él está en hora. Okay, so someone who is super tired, decimos. Wiped out, pero es un adjetivo, right? Si estoy estresado, ¿cómo voy a decir estoy estresado, guys? I am? Stressed out. Stressed out. Stressed out. There we go. I'm not, I am stressed. Mm -mm. I'm stressed out. That is the one. Eh, hey, si le digo a alguien, casate, formalizate, haz algo en tu vida, you know? <laughs> what would you use? Hey, settle down. Hey, settle down. Hey, you should settle down, right? Deberías de ya hacer algo con tu vida. O no necesariamente casarse, pero buscar algo, you know? So settle down, ponerse ya en, en orden. That's what my mother says. <laughs> so settle down. If I want to say, oh, estoy sobreviviendo, you know? Apenas estoy a flote. I'm trying to. What's the expression we're going to use? To keep one hell above water. Mm -hmm. To keep one. Lo de once ya se lo vamos a quitar porque ya lo vamos a, a conjugar también. But it's like, oh, I'm keeping my head above water. You should keep your head above water. Do something to keep your head above water, right? Like, buscar una forma de sobrevivir. If I want to say, oh my God, se me olvidó el cumpleaños. How can I say that? It slipped my mind. mind. Mm -hmm. It has slipped my mind. Exactly. It has slipped my mind. Eso se me olvidó. So voy a utilizarlo con it. Normalmente es bien común hacerlo en pasado. So it has slipped. It has slipped my mind. Se me olvidó, right? And ah, tengo mucho trabajo. What is the idiom that I can use? To have a lot of one plate. Uh -huh. Quitémosle el once y ya digamos, tengo mucho en mi plato. I have a lot on my plate. Tengo mucho trabajo. I have a lot on my plate right now. Uh, tengo muchas cosas que hacer. Ya no hay que hacer con tanto. I have a lot on my plate. So, vamos a irle modificando un par de expresiones. Remember, estas son las idioms en su forma súper, súper básica, but no las estamos conjugando in this, uh, in this way. Ahora sí, let's start working with those. Um, so, give me one second. They are in your book, guys, en la página 38. They are in page number 38. One second. No. Okay. In the previous, uh, in the previous class, también vimos un par de idiomas. More, more, si se recuerdan, en la página 34, 
vimos expresiones como I am a sick as a dog, que yo creo que sí la recuerdan. Because <laughs> everybody was like, oh, I feel like a dog, you know. So I am a sick as a dog, es muy enfermo. También revisamos la de take it easy, relájese, tómelo tranquilamente. Take it easy. I'm feeling under the weather, right? Uh, I'm in tip-top shape. My stomach is killing me. Veíamos que, like, I can say my head is killing me. Uh, there's something going around. Y también son consideradas eh, idioms, right? Or son expresiones idiomáticas que ya no les vamos a cambiar. So, guys, ¿qué vamos a hacer right now? Con las eh, idioms que tenemos acá, with the idioms right here, y solamente escojan tres, please. I want you to select three of them, only three. And let's try to write a question. Intentemos, guys, escribir una pregunta, only one question with these idioms. Solo seleccionen tres. Only select three. Las que ustedes crean que van a utilizar más or the, the ones that you want to include into your vocabulary. Because remember, um, Obviamente no las vamos a memorizar todas, pero what I can say de las más comunes que yo he escuchado are settle down, hang in there, sleep one mind or sleep my mind, eh, ¿qué más? Stressed out, que es de las más comunes, and I have a lot on my plate. Eh, to scale back one hour, cara aviones, no la he escuchado mucho, and to keep my head above water, esa también, but quizás no vaya a ser de las que utilicen muy a menudo, but It is super useful. So, escojamos tres, guys, and uh, escribamos una pregunta, please. Not a sentence, but a question. Intentemos hacer una pregunta de una sola vez. With these idioms. Select three, please. For example, um, if I want to use settle down. Settle down, si es calm down, pero también es como ordenar, you know, your life. I can ask, uh, what do you consider? What do you think is a good age to settle down? Oh, and what is settle down? Pues pretty much como para ya comprometerse, ponerse. Eh, yeah, es que es más como para relaciones, but yeah, that would be the idea. So what do you think is a good age to settle down? Oh, I am already using a question here and I'm already using the idiom. So, seleccionamos tres, guys. Only three. Make a question. Si la podemos escribir en el chat, mucho mejor. So, I can look at it. And uh, ya las practicamos, guys. We will practice them in a moment. So, we have two, three minutes. Guys, si tienen dudas, how to make it, how to make your equation, let me know y la revisamos. So we can definitely check it together.
Okay, so Abigail, your question is really nice. Quizás solamente que te el what. Do you feel white type, white out today? Sounds good. Give me a second. De hecho, acá les voy a copiar. I'm gonna like copy and paste them here because they are really good. So, okay, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Guys, uh, so leave your questions here, please, para que las podamos discutir in a moment. Eh, Dejenlas en el chat. Remember, hagamos preguntas, right? Try to make questions. Do you, did you, are you? So, eh, los únicos que son adjetivos son stressed out y white out. Los demás son verbos. So, pueden perfectamente combinarse con do you. En el caso de stressed out, como es un adjetivo, Podemos hacerlo como lo hizo Abigail. Do you feel white out today? Te sientes como muy cansado. O podemos utilizar are you. Por ejemplo, estás muy estresado. Are you stressed out? Porque es un adjetivo, right? So, obviamente para responderlo utilizo I am. Con los demás, no, son verbos. So, leave your questions, guys. Dejen sus preguntas en the chat, please. Okay, so your question sounds all right. Do you think it's a good idea to hang in there for a moment? Okay. Okay. Are you hanging in there? Okay. What do you stress out? Your work in the morning. Do you like to come up? Okay. What do you stress out? Your work in the morning. Okay, guys, uh, to give you a little bit more of context, hanging there is como aguantar. No sé si alguna vez lo han escuchado. In movies, um, for example, if you are a police officer, 
y alguien necesita ayuda, so, lo más común es decirle, eh, espere un momento, espere ahí, aguántese. So the expression is hanging there, right? Or how, how are you hanging in there? Como aguantar, right? Como lidiar. That is the, the idea of hanging there. Uh, do you have to scale back one hour? Okay. Adiel, okay. your question is good. Uh, la de stressed out. Solamente quizás la modificaré un poquito. Because I'm not sure. Creo que quiere decir como que te estresa de tu trabajo, right? Por las mañanas, me equivoco. Yes, teacher. Maybe why, what stresses you out? I work in the morning. What stresses you out? Ok, eh, por la forma de la pregunta le quitaría el do you y solamente what stresses you out, pero tendríamos que cambiar todo. Si no, en vez de what, cambiemos why. Why do you feel stressed out at work in the morning? So that makes, solo le agregamos le feel, porque stressed out no es un verbo, es un adjetivo. So why do you feel stressed out? I like it there. So I'm going to change my question for that one. So I'm gonna change the one I have and I'm gonna get this. So why, porque, why do you feel stressed out at work in the morning? Thank you, teacher. No problem, but you slip my mind. Okay, so, um, okay, con el sleep, sleep my mind, el más común es eh, it, right? Porque no es que usted, sino que eh, utilizamos siempre it. So, Hector, I'm going to take your example. So, lo vamos a modificar un poquito. We're going to modify it a little bit. So, so did. Vamos a cambiar el orden. Did my birthday. Did my birthday. Is left your mind? That is the one. So that sounds right. More minutes, guys. All right, uh, so Mauricio just help me with the last. It says, remember is live once mine and find it, but what do you mean? You mean like, eh, que no se le olvida? Or what do you mean? Que, que quiere decir? What do you want to say? What do you mean? Eh, digo yo que, que no se olvide comprarlo. 
O sea, cuando digo comprarlo es porque ya sabe lo que se había hablado anteriormente. Mm, ok. No sé si está correcto eso o hay una corrección. Mm, lo que sucede es que slip my mind es olvidarlo. Uh, uh -huh. Entonces, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah, so it's to forget. Entonces, como que hacen un, un contacto ahí con remember. Uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> Pero, uh -huh. I, uh -huh, but to get your idea, es como que no se le olvide comprarlo, right? Ajá. Uh -huh. Recuerda, no se te olvide porque... Recuerda, en el momento le estoy diciendo que recuerde, pero cuando ande en el lugar de comprar, que en ese momento no se le olvide. No sé si estoy, la redacción está muy mala. No, let me, let me just try to get the idea. Porque, ajá, you, what you want to say es como que recuerda esto, right? Sí. Uh -huh. O cuando yo le digo así como salvadoreño, no te voy a olvidar comprarlo. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Don't slip your mind. Don't o de forma puede escribirlo. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Slip my mind. Because I have sent it. Just double check. Could you just slip your mind? Could you just slip your mind? Don't slip your mind. But... No, it wouldn't make sense to say remember. So it's more, it makes more sense to say like, don't slip your mind by it. Okay. Don't slip. Voy a cambiar la oración, entonces. Mm, I, I don't think it's bad. It's all right. Solamente quizás el remember. Mm -hmm. So don't slip food. Okay. Erase and remember. Don't slip your mind. And buy it. And buy it. Oh, wait, wait. And buy it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's all right. Your sentence is quite fine. So let me take it a little remember. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, so, Damaris, your sentences are really good. Uh, so let me take the wipeout. In vez de tú, ahí se va are. Why are you wiped what? out today? Porque uh -huh. ese es un adjetivo. Y en la segunda, ahí sí vamos a agregar el pronombre. Ahí le vamos a agregar el it. It, it slipped my mind, my birthday. Se me olvidó mi cumpleaños. Uh -huh. okay, it slipped teacher. my mind, yes. Thank you, teacher. Uh -huh. It's good. Solamente eh, como sería it, no se le olvida agregar tercera persona, right? So, it slips. A mí se me olvida mi cumpleaños o se me olvidó que tendría que estar en pasado el verbo slip. So, it slipped. My mind, my birthday. Cualquiera de las dos is just fine. Ahí se le agregamos. Guys, ¿lo encuentran difícil? Do you find idioms a little bit hard? Kind of hard. I, I practice more. We are going to practice, actually. Yeah, no worries. We're going to practice it. Ok, so vamos a hacer un par de modificaciones para poder discutir esas preguntas. And so you can try to um, use the idioms here. So, what dates? Now, which dates? Do you normally forget? Ay, 
Okay. Okay, guys. So we're going to practice uh, using this, obviously, a little bit. Solamente, uh, I'm going to include these questions, guys. If you ustedes más, that would be nice. Solamente, let me take a look at them uh, just to make sure that we got them right. Now, um, esas preguntas son de hecho preguntas para discutir. If you take a look, for example, it says, do you feel wiped out today? Como se sienten muy cansados, but why, right? Why do you feel wiped out? The next one is, why do you uh, feel stressed out at work in the morning? Oops. Si no se sienten estresados, pues tell us why. That sounds all right. Uh, next one says, in the morning, yeah. Did you, did your birthday slip your mind? Como se les olvidó su cumpleaños? ¿Alguna vez lo han hecho? Have you ever forgotten your birthday? Are you a forgetful person? Se les ha olvidado algo, guys? Which days do you normally forget? Remember, si quiero utilizar it slip, eh, me, como se me deslizó, eh, no digo I slip my mind, sino la forma más común es decir, por ejemplo, eh, Como lo busco? I can say it was my mom's birthday and se me olvidó and it slipped my mind. So, esa es la forma más común que lo vamos a utilizar, right? Es exactamente así. It slipped my mind. Se me olvidó, right? Another way to say, I forgot it. So it has slipped my mind. Como, ay, se me deslizó. ¿Qué expresión usamos en El Salvador, guys? Do we use another para hacer se me olvidó? Yo uso se, se me fue. Ah, ok, perfect. Se me escapó. Yo digo se me fue. Exactly. So es lo mismo. We use exactly the same expression. Oh, decimos se me escapó. No, yo me escapé, right? Entonces, it has slipped my mind. Se, se me, me forgetió, dice Ezequiel. Se, vaya, se me forgetió. Sería, it slipped my mind. Uh, a veces, bueno, well, tenemos muchas más expresiones, pero es sí, el, 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 you know, el salvadorian one. <ríe> so, exactly like this. Oh, yo tenía una entrevista one day, pero se me olvidó. But I, I, it slipped my mind. But I forgot it, but it slipped my mind. So that is the way we use it. Y la, la última pregunta dice, what is a good age to settle down? ¿Qué era settle down, guys? Como casarse, formalizarse, si están en una relación, si están con alguien, o simplemente decidir qué hacer con su vida, right? si van a estudiar, si no van a estudiar, si van a poner un negocio, pero no es como andar de acá para allá, de ahí para allá, sin decidir qué, qué hacer. That is the idea of settle down. Por eso es que dice como calm down, como calmarse, relajarse. But in the sense of buscar ya tranquilidad, right? So uh, let's discuss them, guys. Uh, si tienen opinions or something, share them. Intentemos en vez, de, en vez de decir forget, it is my mind. En vez de me estresa, I, uh, oh, el stressed out. No digo I stressed out. Well, si sí se puede, pero lo más común es decir, I feel stressed out. This is the most common way, right? Y si quiero decir me estresa algo, yo digo primero el que y luego si todavía me causa estrés, estreses me out. So, esto es bien importante, guys, porque son ya gramaticalmente las formas aceptadas de decirlo. Eh, si quiero decir me siento estresada, I feel stressed out. Y luego digo por qué. Pero si quiero decir qué es lo que me estresa, utilizo primero el qué y luego it stresses me out. Por ejemplo, ¿qué los estresa, guys? Para mí el tráfico toda la vida. So, traffic. So, entonces digo, traffic stresses me out. El tráfico me estresa, right? So, traffic stresses me out. Guys, díganme otra oración. ¿Qué los estresa? What stresses you out? A children's teacher. <laughs> but your children or someone else's children? O los niños de alguien más? <laughs> My. <laughs> okay, so your children stress you out. Okay. <laughs> Guys, ¿qué los estresa? What stresses you out? Wait for food. 
Ah, okay. So waiting for food that stresses you out. Okay. Okay, doing the worries. Thank you. The crying is stress. Your mom. Your mom stresses you out. Hector, what stresses you out? The client. Client. Entonces todos los días, Hector. <laughs> yes, the client. <laughs> your clients, wait, como es plural, clients stress me out. Pero esa es la idea, right? Stress me out, stresses me out. Oh, you know, los pagos, guys. Oh, you know, so that is stresses me out a lot, you know. So I got to include here. Payments, como, uh, a mí se me olvida todo. Um, it all, it, you know, I need to make my, uh, my electricity payment or my internet payment, but it always slips my mind. I forgot it all the time, you know, I keep on forgetting those. So payments stress me out because I forget them. So that is the point. So, si algo me estresa, esa es la forma, my boss. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I definitely can include it here. So, my boss me estresa. My boss stresses me out. That is the word we are going to use. Okay, guys. So, practicamos la, let's practice them. Eh, se las acabo de compartir en el chat. Pues se las comparto en el grupo, guys, para que sea más fácil. Eh, I'm going to make some super, super small groups para que todos puedan, you know, eh, participar too. And ya les comparto la pantalla. I'm going to share my screen too. Guys, tenemos cinco minutitos. Discuten las preguntas. Intenten utilizar el vocabulario nuevo. Try to use it. Eh, por ejemplo, en vez de decir, eh, se me olvida, it has slipped my mind. En vez de decir, estoy cansado, I feel super wiped out. En vez de decir voy a sobrevivir or I feel like surviving, I'm going to keep my head above water. And let's try to use all the vocabulary you can, right? So, no se queden con una respuesta corta. Sigan, guys. Intenten seguir. Try to continue. Cinco minutos, guys. Five minutes. Go, 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 go. Uh, vamos a los grupos, guys. Go to your groups, please. Join the group so you can practice and you can participate with the rest of the guys.
All right, guys, uh, welcome. I think uh, we didn't have like enough time to practice most of these um, idioms, right? But definitely we gotta make it like in the future. Guys, do you have any difficulty with any of the idioms we have right here? Any vocabulary issue? Tuvieron algún problema con alguna palabra de los que están acá? Do you have a problem with any of them? How do you say anniversary, teacher? Anniversary? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. That's an anniversary. Difficulty with the idioms? No one. Um, actually, in the in the WhatsApp group, guys, let's compartí. I share with you like a little clip um where you have this uh idiom that is slip my mind so in the examples you can listen to them la mayoría utiliza it right it has slipped my mind must have slipped my mind uh, so you can listen to it and remember that esa es se me olvido right se me escapó se me chispoteó se me fue you know the normal expressions we use right here so, uh, guys, vamos a, a revisar un poquito de la unidad. Tenemos un par de ejercicios todavía que hacer, um, especialmente con presente perfecto, that are the most common. And uh, give me one second. También tenemos una lectura por ahí que vamos a hacerla later on. So, um, hablando, guys, de, you know, toda la unidad, I know, sé que ha sido bastante. We have checked a lot of things a lot of vocabulary but again please tome ese tiempo you know eh, para um, aprenderse algunas expresiones no todo but probably de las que más van a utilizar y talking about idioms sería de esta de it is in my mind i'm super stressed out i'm feeling super wiped out las phrasal verbs se utilizan muchísimo so pueden utilizarlas uh, you know, like, um, calm down, like, calm down, las que vimos en la clase anterior. Now, uh, to try to finish part of this topic today, vamos a trabajar un poquito con presente perfecto. I have here for you a couple of exercises con present perfect. Y si ustedes se recuerdan, hablábamos de que lo vamos a utilizar para experiencias, cosas que hemos hecho, right? Cosas que todavía no hemos hecho. Y sobre todo, la estructura de esto, eh, vamos a utilizar have como el verbo, re, eh, verbo auxiliar here. Y vamos a utilizar el pasado participio de estos verbos. Si se fijan, acá están mezclados regulares y regulares. Porque al final, toca aprenderse los guys. We gotta memorize them. So, eh, first, recordemos un poquito la estructura. Si son oraciones normales, positivas. Uh, we normally use subject, luego utilizamos have or has, eh, si todavía no han completado los ejercicios de tercera unidad, you know, eso es exactamente lo que vamos a hacer en this part, y luego el pasado participio del verbo. Si son oraciones negativas, solo lo cambiamos por haven't, right? Eh, complement, I'm going to add complement here. Y si son preguntas, lo único que vamos a hacer con las preguntas, guys, es traer el have or el has, para el inicio, lo cambiamos o intercambiamos, es decir, estas dos, right? And en vez de tener, por ejemplo, el eh, subject have, voy a tener primero el have y luego voy a tener el subject. Y eso es exactamente todo lo que hacemos uh, with these two things. So take a look at the um, exercise we have here for you. And... Uh, I think it looks better now. Okay, and take a look here. So for example, number one, number one says like work today. So yo quiero que decir que no he trabajado ahora. Guys, ¿cómo puedo decir que yo no he trabajado ahora? I haven't or mm -hmm. I have no work today. I have no work today. <laughs> Very nice. No work today. Very nice, exactly. No, I am something. not. Uh -huh. Oh, creo que no dejé suficiente espacio, but uh, pretty much you definitely got it. So here, voy a necesitar el auxiliar que es have, right? Negativo, have not, 
o lo hago mucho más corto, I haven't, tengo el verbo work, pero recordemos que es pasado participio y este verbo lo pronuncio con una T al final. Ya sí, vamos a ver también un poquito de, de la pronunciation thingy, but ese era I haven't worked today. No, no se ve. No he trabajado ahora, right? I haven't worked today. So, but that's pretty much the idea. We just, I haven't worked today. What about number two, the second one? It says, we buy a new lamp. Uh -huh. So again, we are talking about experiences and now when I say, hey, hemos comprado una nueva lampara. So how can I say that in English? We have bought, bought uh -huh. a new lamp. Very nice, we have bought a new lamp, exactly. Hey, good, good, you got it. Okay, so we have bought a new lamp. What about next one, guys? It says we not plan our holiday yet. Todavía no tenemos planes para, eh, para holiday, right? For vacation. How can I say that? Thank you. We have no planes. No planes. Mm -hmm. Or holiday yet. Okay, so we haven't. We have not. It's okay. Or la forma contractada. We haven't planned our holiday yet. So we haven't planned. All right, guys, I'll give you five minutes para que completemos el resto. Try to complete the rest of them. Eh, be careful con algunas de ellas. Algunas son preguntas, como por ejemplo, acá pueden ver el signo de interrogación. You have another question at school and you have another question to his boss. Guys, I'll give you five minutes. Eh, podemos seguir la estructura de arriba. Creo que está bastante fácil de seguir. So subject, have o para terceras personas, has, she, he, and it, utilizo has, y luego el pasado participio de los verbos. Si no se recuerdan de los verbos, guys, pueden revisar su diccionario rapidito, la lista de verbos you got, algunos son regulares, to make it work. So, cinco minutos, guys, five minutes. Una consulta, teacher. Mm, yes, Juanjo, tell me. Eh, en esa, en la cuarta donde dice where, ahí el, el have o el has no pasa antes, ¿verdad? Mm, ¿Cómo no? Porque es pregunta. Entonces lo que hacemos cuando es pregunta es exactamente esto en las flechitas. Intercambiamos el orden. Por ejemplo, okay. it says where you be. Yo quiero saber dónde usted ha estado. Así bien tóxicamente. ¿no? <risa> so, yo, ¿Cómo le pregunto dónde ha estado? Where. Y más fácil, eh, puede utilizar primero you. Dejamos pendiente el, el auxiliar y ya lo vamos a utilizar. ¿Cuál es el pasado participio de be? Bean. 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 Pero yo no le puedo preguntar where you been porque me hace falta. Sin embargo, yo sí he escuchado personas que dicen where you been de forma muy informal, right? Pero como queremos hablar eh, inglés un poquito más formal, eh, necesitamos el auxiliar. ¿Qué voy a llevar entonces? Intercambio el orden de estos dos. Tengo sujeto, you, y sé que para you voy a utilizar el have. You have been. Entonces en pregunta, lo único que voy a hacer es sujeto, auxiliar, participio, vengo, lo quito de acá y lo pongo antes. No importa que esté el where, porque este where no me lo modifica, de hecho, no, no me lo, no impide que yo haga el cambio. Y ahora sí, where have you been? ¿A dónde has estado? ¿O a dónde has estado? ¿Mm? Ok, ya regreso. Eh, pero a eso me refería, el have no va antes del where, ¿verdad? No, antes del okay. where, no. No, porque okay. siempre si fuera pregunta... El word siempre, siempre, o el WH word siempre van antes. Mm, okay. They go first. Perfecto. Gracias, teacher. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay.
Ya todos logran ver mi pantalla. Do you see my screen? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Hola papá. Finished it. Already nice, nice. Guys, what about the rest? Do, do you need more time? Tuvo problemas con alguna actor? Do you have any issue with any of this? Or todo bien, everything good. I have a question. Tell me. And the verb when is a question, also we need to put in in past participle. Past participle. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. We always need past participle.
Guys, are we done? Are we good? Do you need more time? I'll give you one more minute. If you need more, let me know, please. Summit. Hi, Mr. Sanchez. Hello, teacher. Hi, dear. All I'm, right, guys. I have two. You got, oh, really? Yeah. You got medical leave? <coughs> no, yet, teacher. Um, but I take a pills. So bad. I hope you get better soon. Yeah. That's really uncomfortable. Yeah. I have had uh, like sore throat for over one month. <laughs> so it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the exercises. Let's do them together, all right? And if you have questions, let us know. Number next. Who has next one, guys? Um, Dinora, do you have next? Uh, after, where have you been? Yes, teacher. Um, he has write, written five letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let me just take a look. I'm going to move this one down. So he has. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we have he has written, right? Written. Has written. written. Uh -huh. Very nice. Very good. Okay, next one, guys. She, who has this one? She. I want to say, ah, que ya no lo he visto. She. She hasn't seen. Ah, she hasn't. Uh huh. She hasn't seen him exactly. So if I wanna say that, like, no te he visto. Oh, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you in a long time. I haven't said so. Very nice. Next one is equation. V U R school. Quiero saber si han estado en la escuela. What is the equation, guys? Have you been at the school? Very good. Have you been at school? Perfect. There we go. Um, la tenemos así. Do you have it like this? Yes. Okay. Next one is about school. Quiero saber, bueno, quiero decir que la escuela todavía no ha comenzado. School has not started yet. Uh -huh. Has not. It started yet. Started yet. But the school hasn't started yet. Remember, podemos siempre contractarlo, and that is perfect. Okay, next one is um, a question again. Quiero saber si él ya habló con su jefe. What would be the question? Has. Mm -hmm. Has. Has he has spoken, spoken, to him? spoken to him? Very good. Has he spoken? Exactly. Has he spoken to his boss? El ya habló con el jefe, right? Has he spoken to his boss? That's the way we go. To Very nice. Mm -hmm. Spoken, right? Speak, spoken, spoken. Next one. No, he. Él no ha tenido tiempo. So what would be the one here? No, he haven't. No, hasen, he hasn't. Hasen. Ah, él no ha tenido. Hasen. Okay. He hasn't have the time yet. Ah, uh, 
he has, so he has, very good. Estos que están los otros más raritos que vamos a ver porque es como has and had. Pero has yeah. and remember es el auxiliar y el verbo es tener. So usamos el participio de have, que es have, have, had. He hasn't had the time yet. Él no ha tenido tiempo. Si yo quiero decir, yo no he tenido tiempo, guys, ¿cómo digo yo no he tenido tiempo? Como es en caso mío, y yo no soy tercera persona, mm -hmm. so I, I haven't had. I haven't had. Exactly, I haven't had. Like, oh, ya empieza el reporte, did you send the report? No, I haven't had time, right? ¿Ya pagaste los recibos? No, I haven't had money. <laughs> ok, so mm -hmm. I haven't had. No, he tenido. I haven't had time. I haven't had money. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity, right? So I haven't had. That's the one we use. All right, preguntas, guys. Dudas, questions, doubts, comments, anything you want to add on this one? No. No? Okay, so if not, I do have some questions for you. So let's go ahead and I just want you to practice a little bit of speaking. So let's go ahead, guys, and give us some opinions, right, about these scenarios. Take a look here. So tenemos el verbo um, shot, tenemos been, tenemos skipped, tenemos gone, ridden, lost, and met. So we have meet, met, met. Lose, lost, lost, ride, road, ridden, right? Que es de montar, de subirse. Go, go, gone, and skipped, skipped, and skipped. So, um, for example, take a look at the first. Have you ever shot a gun? ¿Alguna vez han disparado? So, tenemos el verbo shoot, shoot, shot, and shot. Next one is, have you ever yeah. been abroad? Abroad is como la primera picture, right? ¿Alguna vez han estado fuera del país? Have you ever been abroad? ¿Han estado en el extranjero? Have you ever skipped classes? So what is the meaning of a skip? Guys, ¿alguien ha visto esa palabra antes? Have you ever skipped classes? Or skipped to work? ¿Alguien sabe qué es skip? Faltar, exactly. Como saltarse una clase, right? Guys, at the university or back in the school, ¿alguna vez escaparon de clases? Or here in English classes, ¿alguna vez han faltado? Yes, teacher. ¿Alguna vez yes. escapado? No por el trabajo, right? Pero es como, ay, tengo clases, me voy a ir a comer pupusas, you know? En clases en línea es difícil because uh, you're working, you're not at home sometimes. Pero en clases físicas, at university, ¿alguna vez se escaparon? Did you go to the movie theater? ¿Se fueron al cine, guys? <laughs> or did you go with your friends? You know, our, my, my classmates uh, back in high school, they skipped classes para irse a, al río. They went to a river. Can you imagine? <laughs> Guys, what about you? ¿A dónde está Ivan? Where did you go? I go to the play machine. The... Ah, las maquinitas. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so to play with some machines. Wow, that was a long time ago. Okay. Guys, what about the rest of you? ¿A dónde se iban? When you skipped classes. Did you do something, I don't know, something productive or just because? So you're going to help us. Next one says, have you ever done surfing? No sé si alguien ha ido a surfear alguna vez. Have you ridden a horse or have you ridden, ridden a motorcycle? Do you have a motorcycle? And la siguiente tiene que ver con la picture de abajo. Have you ever lost your temper in public? Lose your temper. ¿Alguna vez han perdido como um, control de sus emociones? Have you ever lost your temper in public? But like in public, right? You got angry or you started screaming, empezaron a gritar. Or have you ever gotten like super angry in public? 
Y la última, have you ever met? Recordemos que met es el pasado participio del verbo meet, conocer. Have you ever met anyone famous? ¿Alguna vez han conocido a alguien famoso? Have you been to the concert of, ¿cómo se llamaba este tipo, guys? The one from, I think it was Colombia. Uh, but Bunny, like, he was super famous. Have you ever met anybody famous? Have you ever seen somebody famous? Uh, so what are your thoughts? Guys, vamos a hablar un momento. Eh, no van a escribir nada. You're not supposed to write anything. Just tell your classmates your opinions. Tell your classmates what you think about it, right? And we'll go. Tenemos solamente like cinco o siete minutos to talk. So try to talk as much as possible. And then we come back to share some more ideas. All right. So guys, tenemos seven minutes. You get seven minutes and then we come back. Eh, les presento la, la, la picture, así que no worries, no tiene que tomar la captura. You don't need to um, take a picture. There you go. Vamos a los grupos, guys. Join the groups.
thank you for coming back, guys. Um, so just a second. I'm missing three people. Okay. okay guys so uh talking about these questions guys which kind of experiences um do you have from the ones that were on the list so has anybody shot a gun yes i have Ah, oh, really, Julio? With uh, like hunting? Have you gone hunting? Yes, I go to the range for shooting. Ah, okay. Where? San Miguel. No, at the La Paz. Ah, okay. Have you ever hunted any animal? No, it's only for practice. Okay, yes, to practice shooting. Yes. Okay. But you have never, you have never like hunted anything. No, it's a uh, like like tree. Just oh, just to a tree. Oh, okay. Is it exciting? Uh, I. I don't like because it's a little bit dangerous, but mm. it's okay. You don't like it? No. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But and I would like to. <laughs> really? It's yeah. complicated. Because yeah. when, you, when uh -huh. you are uh, angry, it's mm -hmm. dangerous. <laughs> I know, definitely. But do you yeah. do you have a gun with you or just for fun? No, it's just for fun. Oh, I okay. don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, as you said, it's very dangerous. Okay. Uh but guys, what about the rest of you? Which experiences do you have? Have you been abroad? Have you skipped classes? Or have you ridden a horse? Guys, have you ridden a motorcycle? Do you have motorcycles? No, I haven't. But can you ride a motorcycle or have you ever ridden one? No, I don't can ride because I don't like ride a motorcycle. It's a more dangerous. Okay, it is dangerous. That's right. Interesting. You haven't ridden one. Okay. Guys, I get, uh, what about the rest? Boys, girls? Tizian Subido, have you ridden a motorcycle? Yes, teacher. I have, but I don't like it uh, because it's very uh, dangerous. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. But you have ridden, but Tizia Subido, you have Yes, ridden. teacher. Yes. Oh, okay. okay, so you have it. You already got experience. Guys, um, has anybody been abroad? Alguien ha estudiado fuera o ha trabajado fuera del país? Have you ever worked or been abroad, like in a different country? Yes, I have, teacher. Where? I work uh, in the Chinese. Did you work in China? For, yeah, for six months. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. From your, from the, your company. Capa, capacit, a training. A training. A training. In China. In the same company. From the same company. Yeah, yeah. For, <gasps> because uh, uh, in my company have a sucursales, ¿cómo se A branch. A branch in the, uh, Vietnam, China, mm. Korea, Bangladesh. Oh my God. Where were you? And did you no go one. did you go to the to Bangladesh or did you go to any other city? Uh, the other city in mm -hmm. the Vietnam, Bangladesh, Korea, and Chinese. You went to the four of them? Yeah. 
Amazing. Sí, hey, es very good. interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Did you like it? Uh, more or less because uh, only the the desde San Francisco a Korea press, 13 hours 13 hours long mm -hmm. fly the, yeah, yeah the flight is too yeah. long yeah that's right well but you, being in Peace. another country it's a different world so. Peace. <laughs> yeah the culture is very interesting. Yes, so Maurice, no tiene que contar mañana. You have to tell us about that experience. <laughs> okay. Guys, alguien más ha estado fuera? Have you ever worked out of the country? O alguien ha vivido fuera? Have you lived like out of the country? Nobody else. Not yet. <laughs> mm. So todavía no, not, not yet, right? Yet. Okay, not yet. All right, so you tell us some more. Guys, unfortunately, we ran out of time. So I let so much distance and I let you uh, like sleep and rest a little bit. Uh, give me one second. Abigail, is that for the Present. Gracias, Miss. I have two, but yes, it was here. Uh, Andrea. Creo que no vi Andrea. Uh, Blanca. Presente. Gracias, Miss. Eh, Georgina. Present. He Gracias. Hector. Here I am, teacher. Thank you so much. Mr. Sanchez. Por ahí había Mr. Sanchez. Here, teacher. Thank you, Mr. Narvaez. I think I saw him as well. Eh, Juanjo. Por aquí, teacher. Gracias, Ezequiel. También. I think I saw Kenya. Via Kevin hace un momento. Lady Mauricio. Present. Uh, no, I is acá. No, I don't see him. No, I haven't seen him today. Is Salvador, yeah. Uh, Miss Bonilla. Abigail. Abigail. I think I haven't seen her. Okay. Um, Dinora. Gracias, uh, Damaris. Here, teacher. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I think there we go. All right, guys. So amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Solamente no se les olvide completar la sesión número tres, please. Eh, algunos ya avanzaron, ya lo terminaron, pero algunos veo que todavía falta con la tres. So please, intentemos avanzar para que no nos vayan quedando pendiente, right? Like many, many sessions. Thank you, people. Nos vemos el día de mañana. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have an amazing night. Que descansen, guys. Sleep Bye. well. Good See you tomorrow, everyone. teacher. If God willing. See you tomorrow, guys. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Bye-bye. See you. See you. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two. Mm -hmm.